Good morning, everyone. So we'll be doing now the uh, third part of the class for today. First session we did for maths review, and next one was for reasoning review, and this is for the English review of IBPS PO 2018. So if you look at the English paper uh, of the last year's IBPS PO prelims examination. Uh, you'll see that there were a lot of changes in terms of the new types of questions that have come. So we'll be discussing all the new types of questions that came in the paper last year. Also, if you look at the way reading comprehension has come in the year 2018, that will be something that you need to think about. Because there were three passages instead of one. So earlier in the papers, if you see in 16 or 17, there was a, there was a passage with one passage uh, with 10 questions that you would get 10 marks from reading comprehension. But right now, reading comprehension, there are three passages and there's only seven questions that you get from the reading comprehension. So my advice would be not to solve or start with the reading comprehension part of the paper. In reading comprehension, seven questions which came, two questions were based on uh, word meaning, like vocabulary. So at least those two you could have done. And then the remaining 23 questions, which were non-reading comprehension questions, like questions on grammar, vocabulary and jumbled sentences, they were pretty simple and easy to handle. So 23 questions of uh, which are not reading comprehension questions and two questions of vocabulary from reading comprehension. So that's total 25. 25 questions you can easily attempt with a good level of accuracy in 20 minutes. So what we'll be discussing today are the other questions which are not reading comprehension questions. So you see vocabulary, you we'll look at grammar and jumbled sentences. Okay, now let's start the first type of question. Now this is a question that used to come earlier in exams like CAT or other MBA entrance exams. But now we are seeing this question also in the banking examination. So a standard question where one uh, word is given to you. So here the word is hamper. In the following question, a word is given that is followed by three statements. All the three statements carry the given word. Identify the sentences which in which the word fits to make them grammatically correct and meaningful. So basic uh, task that you are required to perform here is that you have to find out the um, sentences where the word has been used correctly. Okay. So this requires a uh, basic information like what is the meaning of the word. Uh, the word given to you in this question is hamper. So what is the meaning of the word hamper? If your basic vocabulary is good and you know the meaning of the word, then you can easily solve this question quickly. Let's say in around 20, 25 seconds, you can find out the answer. So what is the meaning of the word hamper in English language? So hamper can be a verb and hamper can be a noun. In the form of a verb, an action word, we can say hamper means something that obstructs, something that blocks, something that becomes an obstacle. And hamper in the form of a noun could be used as a gift hamper. Like, you know, many companies or you can get gift hamper uh, from different uh, companies. So uh, let's see the word hamper as obstacle and hamper as a noun and observe the three sentences here and see which sentence has used the word hamper correctly. The sentence move to direct oil marketing companies to lower auto fuel price hampers the confidence. So hampers the confidence, uh, it's an obstacle or a problem, the confidence of oil companies in investments made in India. So this uh, sentence is used correctly. Now look at the second sentence, Metro railway services were hampered. Again, we are using it as a verb, hampered, hindrance, obstructed for 15 minutes on Monday, which means the word has been used correctly in the second sentence as well. And if you look at the third sentence, High street retailers, Marks and Spencers and John Lewis and Partners have also released their own hampers. Now here hampers is like a gift hamper, which are far more affordable than the luxury offerings. So that means the word hamper has been used correctly in all the three sentences, which makes the answer for this question E. E is the right answer for the first question here on the screen that you see. So this kind of question, uh, for this you should have a good uh, basic vocabulary where you know and you are comfortable with most of the common words that we use in English communication in on a day-to-day -day basis. For this you should read newspaper articles and you should read magazines and maybe some books to get comfortable with the common words that are used in daily communication in the English world. Okay. Now let's move on to question number two. The, what is the word here? Tact. The word here is tact. 
and tact means doing something skillfully you know if you have, if you have tact in you you can do things skillfully and you can perform your tasks in a much better way so a person who is tactful basically means he is skillful he knows how to get uh, things done and how to do things in the best possible way that's what we mean by the word tact so we can use the word tact as a tactful which means it can be used as an adjective and uh, if you see here the kind just was tactful when he informed the dancers of her elimination from the show so he was skillful he knew exactly how to handle the dancers when they were eliminated from the show he handled the situation in a better way they came up with a tactfully now he did something tactfully is right but with a tactfully to reach the destination is not grammati grammatically correct do something tactfully that's okay we can use it in the adverb but this is not the right way to use the word here next if you look at he had an engaging personality and use tact in dealing use skill in dealing with his patients right uh, so that means the word tact has been used correctly in sentence number 3 as well so we have used the word uh, in this uh, particular question the word has been used correctly in both sentence number 1 as well as sentence number 3 and that is why if you uh, look at the answer here it should be 1 and 3 so both 1 and 3 so there is something wrong with the answer options here so just correct the answer option let's say both 1 and 3 so answer option will become b so in the first sentence and the third sentence the word has been used in the right way the way it should actually be used next we go to uh, question number 3 and look at the word here adage now in english language an adage is a platitude something that has been used from a long time uh, an old saying you know, as an idiom for example work is worship or knowledge is power uh, these are old sayings like stitch in time saves nine honesty is the best policy these are called as adages or adage something that is an old uh, saying which has a lot of wisdom in it and which gives you some uh, knowledge about how you should lead your life so despite what that old adage says so now this is the correct form here what the old adage says uh, i like to have my cake eat it and then have another piece now the uh, adage that this sentence is referring to is that you can't have your cake and eat it too so that's the adage that this sentence is referring to and it's saying that despite what the old adage says i can have my cake and i can also eat it and have then have another piece <clears throat> so this is where the sentence has used the word adage correctly among other things the writer is famous for adaging now we can't use adage adage is a noun we can't use adage as a verb like adaging that's grammatically correct there's no way in english language we can use the word adage as a verb so adaging would be wrong tired of all the same old sayings he adaged a new thought again uh, we are using adage as a verb here and that's not right uh, he adaged a new thought he came up with a new thought you could say uh he came with a new adage now again comes a new adage because an adage is something which is an old saying it's from a long time that people have been listening to it and they have been following it and you know getting wisdom out of it so the second and third one are wrong and therefore the right answer students for this question is question number 1 a only one it is a first sentence that uses the word adage in the best uh, possible way and in the correct way which is grammatically and meaningfully correct that's question number 3 so develop your vocabulary so if you if you're looking at exams see five questions from uh, vocabulary uh, in the form of uh, looking at the sentences and finding out which sentence has used the word correct uh, correctly and which sentence is grammatically correct and then two questions of vocabulary from at least two questions you can say three questions also of vocabulary from reading comprehension that's 5 plus 3 8 then you will see questions five questions that have come from vocabulary based you can say vocabulary a little bit of grammar in the way that a the word is in bold and you have to find out which word is not used correctly so that also those questions also require your knowledge of vocabulary so that means 5 plus 3 8 plus 5 13 out of 30 questions 13 that makes it almost 50% you know 50% of the questions in the english uh, english section of the examination are based on vocabulary so you must definitely invest some time in developing your vocabulary getting to know about words uh, at least start by learning five words per day and then you can read newspaper article maybe you can keep like half an hour every day to read uh, newspaper articles from the editorials of some of the national newspapers like times of india or the hindu 
uh, you know, or Deccan Herald. Uh, nowadays, we see that in the banking examination, the reading comprehension paragraphs and the passages are being taken from the foreign newspapers also. So we had in the year 2018, a paragraph taken from the newspaper, The Guardian. And then we have uh, articles from The Economist or so The Time Magazine also. So it would also make sense that if you subscribe to some of these apps online, most of the newspapers are available online in the form of apps. You can read them. You can like the pages on Facebook and also read articles. Read articles frequently. Keep half an hour every day for reading articles getting to know more about words and that will help you solve 50% of the questions in the examination in the English uh, English section of the examination. Now uh, 50 and, and the good thing about vocabulary is that if your vocabulary is good you can solve those questions very quickly. For example a person with a decent vocabulary would solve these questions that you're seeing on the screen right now in approximately 15 to 20 seconds itself. So if there are 13 questions and in one minute you can solve three then you can solve uh, 13 questions in about 4 minutes itself. So 4 to 5 minutes, you are done with 13 questions out of 30. And then you are still left with 16 minutes to tackle the remaining part of the paper. That will give you more time so that you can complete the other questions of grammar and paragraph jumbles and even try out with one or two passages also. But question number 4 is again same thing. The word is given to you is malaise. M-A-L-A-I-S-E. It comes from the root word mal which means bad. A malaise is something, a malaise is something which is bad, something which is unpleasant or it, is, it makes you restless, you're not well, it's a kind of a disease, it's also we can think of it like a disease, right? So now we can use the word malaise as, as a noun and look at the uh, sentences and observe where it has been used as a noun. If we cannot use it as a verb like malaising or malaise, the moment I see malaise here, I know the sentence is wrong and malaise full again there is nothing like malaise full here so this also will be wrong so the right answer would be two now let's look at two whether two is right or not <clears throat> many citizens who live near the contaminated river are complaining of a malaise of a disease of a, something that's unpleasant that keeps them bedridden a disease a sickness that keeps them bedridden so the right way the correct way of using the word malaise can be seen in the second sentence so that makes the answer as B, that's only two. The correct answer for question number four is only two. It's only the second sentence out of the three sentences which uses the word malaise in the right way. All right, now uh, look at question number five here. Now there are five questions in the paper of match the columns uh, one and two matching sentences. So we have part of a sentence is column one and then we have part of sentences in column two and you have to find out uh, which two parts connect with each other. So let's read the instructions first here. In the following questions, two columns, one and two, each containing three sentences are given. Column one consists of the first part of three sentences and column two consists of the remaining part of those three sentences. Match column one with column two so that the sentences formed are meaningful and grammatically correct. Okay, so get to match the sentences and find out which two parts match up. It's not necessary that all three will be getting a match in column two. So this is a question that you will not see in papers in 16 or even 15. So this is a new addition in the IBPS Pure Banking paper. But this question, these questions have been there in other exams which also have English as a part of it. Like I told you MBA exams are there like CAT and MAT, PGCT. Then we have a law entrance exam called as CLAT and other aptitude tests in India which have English as a part of the test have these questions from a long time. So although we see this for the first time in the banking examination, other exams we have already seen these questions, okay? So now let's look at column 1 and column 2, read the three sentences in column 1, match it up with column 2 and find out the right answer. We believe in a circular rather. Now whenever you see the word rather, then we should go with than. Now look at the sentences D, E and F and you see than and circular goes with linear. So we believe in a circular rather than a linear concept of time. Uh, this refers to the way India looks at time as four yugas which come in a cyclical fashion. Okay. So that means A and E are correct. So we get one match here which is A and E and we can see A and E in only two answer options that is B, E and B and answer option E. And in answer option B we have B, F, C, D whereas in answer option E we have C, F. 
first let's look at CF and find out is CF right or not. Now look at C here, the word Jagannath was originally used to denote the Rath Yatra temple car. The word Jagannath itself comes from the Hindi word Jagannath. So there's a, uh, there's a British historian who came to India and he witnessed the Jagannath Yatra and then he asked someone what is it, someone said that it is Jagannath and then he heard it as Jagannath and that's how the word Jagannath came into origin. So now look at this, the word Jagannath was originally used to denote the Rath Yatra temple car which was so massive, now we are talking about the temple car which was so massive, uh, it would crush devotees under the wheel. So you can see the link between C and F, so yes, C and F is the right link and that makes the answer as E. We don't need to worry about B now because B does not have CF. And if you look at B, the Rig Veda was written more than 3800 years ago. Veda is superior to Albert Einstein's theory of relativity equation. There is no link between these two things, these two, two look as a separate sentences in themselves. So B and uh, B does not have a link in column 2. And that's how we get the answer for question number 5. The answer is E that A and E and C and F are the right pairs that we get from this question. Okay, question number 5, answer option E. Now uh, let's look at question number 6. The drill is same. We have uh, column 1, 3 sentences and column 2, 3 sentences to match them up so that the sentences are complete and grammatically correct. Now look at the first one. A garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean and uh, there's a mass of floating rubbish in the Pacific Ocean, about 80% of the plastic trash that makes up the Great Pacific Ocean. All three are talking about ocean whereas E talks about farmers to help farmers who depend on weather. So that means E is clearly out. So wherever we see E and now we can just simply cut them off. Okay, So now we have left with BECF. So again BE is also gone. So either it's AF and CD or is it only BF. So first of all, let's look at B and F. There's a mass of floating rubbish in the Pacific Ocean weighing around. Now weighing around how much? Now there's no weight given to you, no? It's believed to have originated and has just to almost twice the size of France. So BF, there's nothing called as BF. So that means the answer is C. So without looking at all the sentences, I could easily tell you that the answer is B, uh, A, F and C, D. Look at A, a garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean has stretched to almost twice the size of France. That's a perfect link between A and F. And if you look at uh, C, D, so about 80% of the plastic trash that makes up the great Pacific garbage patch is believed to have originated from land-based activities. So it's a perfect link between A, F and C, D. However, I have just displayed to you that without reading the full sentences, by eliminating the answer options, we can easily solve the question. So what I did first was to look at E and see that here, see A, B and C, all the three sentences talk about oceans and here E is talking about farmers. So wherever I see E becomes wrong and that's how I eliminated A, I eliminated B and E and it became so easy for me to just look at C and D and tell the answer. And when I look at B and F and, and they make perf uh, don't make sense, you know, so uh, therefore the answer would be A, F and C, D. Now let's look at question number 7 and apply the same technique in solving this question. So we have column 1 and column 2. Let's try and look at column 1. Overfishing can wreak havoc to marine ecology and completely, now I can say completely eventually, that cannot happen, no? Completely our oceans, that's also not completely the marine animals. So that means A does not have a link anywhere, you know. So A does not have a link here. A, F, A, F, all this cancelled. So we have B, C, F and B, F. So let's look at B, F. Unsustainable fishing practices over the last few decades have pushed the marine animals, exposing them to harsh environments. Now pushed the marine, so unstable fishing practices over the last few decades have pushed the marine animals, exposing them to harsh environment. That is not uh, not correct. So it should be actually unsustainable fishing practices over the last few decades have pushed our oceans to a point where they may now be on the verge of collapse. So the right link is BE not BF. So the answer is A. BE and CF form the right link. Now what you should uh, observe here is the way I eliminated A as an option because with A there is nothing there. That means any answer option which contains A and a sentence from column 2 is wrong and that immediately removed answer option B, C and E for me and that left it with me with just two options and I just verified B and got the answer. This is your approach that you should be using for questions of these types. Okay. Now let's read the remaining two. So we have got the link between B, E and C, F. So let's read B, E. B, E, e already have read and let's look at C, F. Oil destroys the insulating 
and water repellent properties of the marine animals. So this is the perfect fit, you know. Oil destroys the insulating and water repellent properties of the marine animals, exposing them. So once we destroy this insulating property, we expose them to harsh environment and that's why C and F make the best correct pair, okay. So question number 7 we have seen here and now I will start time to look at question number 8. So there were five questions overall and you can see how simple these questions are and that you can finish off each question in like 20-25 seconds maximum if you have good reading skills. Uh, at Howard Sherrill founded a group meant to encourage women to know so much about them as possible that's not possible so AE is not and ended up becoming the first Indian woman that's also not right and that have made the social network site the market giant it is that's again not right so that means A is not in the answer so these three are gone. So it's BE, BF and then CF. So let's look at C and F. In the Hall of Fame of women breaking, uh, breaking the glass ceiling and painting their name on it that have made this social networking site. So how can we go from C to F? Because F talks about the social networking site. So it should be linked with Facebook. You know, this Facebook is a social networking site. So the correct link is between B and F, not B, E and C, F. And that gives us the answer here, B, F. Let's read B and F and see how it's uh, the right answer. So Sheryl Sandberg is responsible for spearheading, that means leading, several successful Facebook projects that have made the social networking side the market giant it is today. So you can see the perfect link between B and F. But again, I said that you should observe the way I took A first and eliminated three answer options based on that and that it became simpler for me, easier for me to solve and in, in this, if I use this approach, I can actually solve this question and get the answer in a matter of 15 to 20 seconds maximum. Alright, so that's your answer for question number 8. Let's look at question number 9. So 5 questions are there, I told you 5 marks for the taking and 4 questions are from uh, vocabulary uh, where you have 3 sentences and you have to find out which sentence was grammatically correct. So 9 marks you can get within maximum 5 minutes. Okay, let's look at this. Elephants prefer one task over the other care of the calves that's not possible just as humans no not possible subsonic rumblings no so that means a has no link here so that means we are done with three now we have b f b e so let's look at b elephants use their feet to listen they listen they can pick up subsonic rumblings made by other elephants uh, through vibrations in the ground so you can see feet and vibrations in the ground there's a perfect link so b f should be our answer not b e and c f we look at CF, what is the problem with CF? Elephants herds are matriarchal with older females taking subsonic rumblings. That's not possible. No? We can't have CF. That's why it's so easy, so simple for you to solve and tell what will be the answer for this question. So you've seen how easy these five questions were. And then the previous four questions, nine marks, two questions from reading comprehension from vocabulary, that's 11 marks. 11 marks you could have done within a matter of five minutes itself in the examination. And then we we'll still have you know 15 minutes and uh, the remaining questions to go with right okay now let's look at question number 10 so now this is a question that is based on sentence uh, replacement so one sentence is given five questions are there based on this sentence replacement that's purely grammar question so let's look at the uh, instructions here in the given question a part of the sequence is printed in bold okay so you can see this part of the sequence sentence is in bold which may uh, are given which may help improve the sentence okay so choose the option that reflects the correct use of the phrase in the context of the sentence in case the given sentence is correct your answer is e that is no correction required so a part of the sentence is in bold sometimes it could be in underline and that part may or may not contain a grammatical error so what we have to do is look at the three options given here and find out if we can replace the part in bold with any of these options which improve the sentence, makes it grammatically correct and more meaningful. If in the part in bold itself is correct and it need not be replaced with anything else, then the answer will simply become E, which is no correction required. This is a, st a standard method of sentence uh, correction or what we also call as phrase replacement. So, and it has been in uh, so many different exams as a part of the English uh, section. Now look at this, no other region in the world illustrates the chronic nature of displacing caused by extreme weather events. Chronic nature of displacing. 
Now, chronic nature of displacing is not right here. Actually, it should be chronic nature of displacement. And you can see chronic nature of displacement is there in 1 and 2, but not in 3. So, 3 is absolutely out of question here. Now, chronic nature of displacement is caused by extreme weather and caused by extreme weather. Now, this is where we have the, uh, uh, what we can say, the homophone, same sounding words. But this is correct here because that's whether the climate we are talking about, whether, whereas this weather is about what else, like whether he will come today or not, right? So that is this weather, W-H-E-T-H-E-R. So again, the knowledge of your spelling and vocabulary is being tested. So if you see how important vocabulary can be in your IBPSPO examination, you know, if you are preparing for IBPSPO prelims or mains, or any other bank examination or any other aptitude examination. So correct answer is 1A, only 1. Five questions are based on this type which you could have done again within a matter of two to three minutes maximum. So very easy questions, uh, 30 seconds around maximum 25 to 30 seconds and if you are well prepared you could do it in 20 seconds or less time. So let's look at question number 10 we have done. Now look at question number 11, same thing. Uh, we can observe here, uh, this part of the sentence is bold here Okay, and we have to find out a suitable replacement for this part from the options given to us 1, 2 and 3 and if all of the options are wrong and if the sentence itself is correct then the answer would be no correction required. The recent incidence of drug overdose related deaths right, uh, has brought the spotlight back in the drug menace, I mean as in uh, the state and on the role of the Punjab police in curbing it. So the recent incidence of drug overdose, this part is correct. So overdose is right, overdosing is wrong. So we can uh, remove this part here, overdose. Drug overdose related deaths, so then hyphen, hyphenating it would make sense and you can see that both 2 and 3 are hyphenating it correctly. So drug overdose related deaths, uh, having brought is not right. And why do we need here has, you know, why do we need have, now please understand this. But the recent incidence, this is plural. So if you're talking about the subject being plural, then the verb should also be plural. And that makes it the correct answer. Uh, overdose related deaths have brought the spotlight back on the drug minutes. Here also you can see spotlight back over is also not right. This We cannot say spotlight back over. Although overdosing itself is wrong, so we don't need to look at that over part. But the sentence is 2. The correct replacement should be 2, which is answer option B. A basic comfort with grammar and understanding of how sentences are connected and formed can help you solve these questions with you know, skill and precision very quickly and very uh, no, uh, with 100% accuracy you can solve. So five questions from sentence replacement and then we have five questions of this word replacement. So there is a sentence given to you and in that sentence four words are in bold. Five questions are there from vocabulary again. So uh, four words are given in bold. So in the question one sentence is given and four words have been given in bold denoted by A, B, C and D, you have to decide which of the following is inappropriate in the context. If all the words are appropriate in the context and mark all correct in as your answer. So if all the words which are in bold fonts are right and they're grammatically and meaningful, uh, grammatically and semantically also correct, then uh, we'll mark the answers all correct. E would become the answer. So in digestion, spelling is right, underline uh, is often a sign of an underline. Although the spelling of underline is right, it will not be uh, grammatically correct, it does not fit in the sentence. It should be underlying. Underlying problem such as an ulcer rather than a condition on its own. So others are right, B is wrong, so answer will become B. So there are five questions like this in the paper, very simple, uh, basic spelling questions and understanding how to use the word correctly in a sentence. That's all is required. So don't just read the words, you know, if you see, read the word, then all the words are correct in spelling wise. So read the context in which the word is used and then decide which word is not appropriate in the given sentence. Okay, if you only look at the spellings, you will make a mistake in getting the answers all correct because all of the four spellings in this particular sentence is, uh, sentence is correct. All the four spellings are correct. Now next we have five questions based on jumbled sentences and these are also very simple this time. If, if you look at the previous paper, the sentence jumbled sentences are very easy. Simple sentences, not lengthy, easy to solve. 
so five marks from there so i would say in english you could aim for around 26 27 marks itself but try to maximize your score in english so that you know in other two sections also if you clear the cutoff you can also clear the overall cutoff in the examination that is why english is so important if you want to crack the examination so look at the uh, sentences here uh, we can't start with however so that is gone i'm just looking at the starting sentence so a is absolutely not possible now ddc now look at c consequences so c is also not right so uh, it will be dbd so both contain dbc dbc okay let's do it look at dbc if an able bodied student engages in cheating the normal consequence is his disqualification and then we need however so i need a first and then e so the right, right answer will be b if an able bodied student engages in uh, cheating the normal consequence is his disqualification however the upsc decided to get the guidelines changed so this is the answer here so easy this question you could have actually done in 10 seconds in the examination that's how simple this question is look at the way i first eliminated the options now the moment i see however i know the sentence cannot start with however so two answer options gone the moment i see consequence in his disqualification that's absolutely not possible we cannot use a third person pronoun uh, unless until the noun has already been used so when we say able-bodied student and then say his disqualification then it's perfect so then i was left only with two options a and b and then choosing the right answer was not at all difficult after getting two options left let's look at one more question from the jumbled sentences and see how will we solve it now will be seven so that means the starting sentence can't be b we don't have b anywhere yeah we have b here when he arrives so we can't have this so all the sentences must start with a we have ac ac and ab look at a harry and megan's little one when he she arrives ac is not possible so that means answer is b now without reading anything further just five seconds without reading the full question i can tell you the answer is b and 100 percent the answer is b here a and c is not possible so look at the uh, strategy and technique I am using for solving these questions in English language. Develop those strategies to ace the English paper. If you can manage to finish off the 23 questions which are not uh, reading comprehension questions, within 10 to 12 minutes you can actually finish off the reading comprehension also and you can do all the 30 questions in the paper. Getting up to 26 to 27 marks in the English paper would almost guarantee that if you clear the cutoff of the other two sections, you clear the overall cutoff of the examination. Okay, so right answer is B here. So Harry and Megan's little one will be seventh in line to the throne when he she arrives and will be about a year younger than the re reigning baby of the family. That's answer A, B, C, D, E. So since I have uh, given you a full review of the English paper of IBPS Puyo 2018, I hope you have enjoyed the class and you have learned something that will help you solve an ace in the English paper of IBPS Puyo prelims 2019. So uh, every Tuesday I'll be conducting these classes, every week I'll be doing some live classes for you and also we have a host of videos available on the app that you can access if you have passport access to our Haslin app. So I'll suggest that if you have not taken the passport access, please do take the passport access that will give you more than 200 videos, high quality videos in English as well as Hindi so that you can prepare the best possible way for your examination and age and get into uh, crack one of these exams this year itself. So I'll see you uh, next week with my live sessions of uh, aptitude training where I'll be discussing mathematics and reasoning and current affairs to help you all the way for all the examinations that you're taking this year and the next year. Alright students, so I'll see you next week and until then, thank you so much.